Hey guys, Poro here with another guide, this being the first Poro's guide since the beginning of March. I made a community post earlier where I asked you guys what champions you wanted to see me make a guide for. People wanted Lulu, Garen, Jax, Tarek, Gwen, Singed, all of these cool picks that I rated highly on my off-meta jungle tier list. I took all of your thoughts into consideration and carefully picked a champ I figured you would all have me want to do. Yasuo Jungle Guide. Nobody asked for this. So to get started, why Yasuo jungle? He already has three rules he can play, those being mid, bot, and top. Why pick jungle over any of those? Well, I've got a few reasons for you. For starters, let's talk about Yasuo's identity. At his core, Yasuo is a melee champion who likes to stat check the enemy. This is great if you're even or ahead, but horrible if you're behind. Ever wonder why your Yasuo teammates either always go 20-0 or 0-20? I'll tell you why. Yasuo is a special variant of those melee stat checkers since he has absolutely zero way to fight the enemy without going directly on top of them. He also has basically no way to farm the wave without being on top of the wave. What does this mean? Well, it means once a Yasuo falls behind, he can't farm, he can't trade, and he can't fight unless he's willing to die for it. It can be extremely frustrating to play Yasuo when you fall behind, as you literally can't do anything unless the enemy allows you to. There are ways to outplay on the champ of course, but at its core, Yasuo can only go in if he wants to fight. This is why Yasuo usually snowballs one way or the other. Now imagine if there was a way that you could safely scale up without needing to worry about a lane opponent. Oh wait a second, there is. Welcome to Yasuo jungle. In this role, Yasuo can freely farm camps without needing to worry about taking aggressive trades perma in lane regardless of if ahead or behind. Instead, you can scale to level 6 easily, you can scale to 2 items easily, and you can carry games without risking the O10 Yasuo classic. Of course, this is only all in theory, but we need to make sure it works in practice. That's what this guide is for. As always, we'll start with the clear. Yasuo has plenty of tools that allow him to clear the jungle well. His passive provides him with a shield that can block damage, meaning his sustain isn't that bad. His Q is AoE on every cast, meaning lining it up well enough can take care of the multi-camps. His DPS is pretty good due to his constant Qs as well. There are some other important things to know about his kit, but I'll get to those later as I go through his clear. When you pick this champ, you need to make sure of a few things. 1. Do not pick Yasuo jungle if your lanes don't have setup for you. This will be important when I go over ganks. Once you know that you have setup such as a mage with CC mid or an engaged support, Yasuo jungle is fine. Once in game, buy blue pet and health pot, and very importantly, start yellow trinket. You can start on either side and the fundamental clear is the same, so I'll just show one version of it. I'm starting blue here and it's as simple as making sure Q and auto are rotated efficiently. You take E second and then do relatively the same thing to Gromp. Don't forget to cut your camps, which on Yasuo is usually pelting the camp with Q as you're running to the next one. When you get to Wolves, try to find a way to line up your Q with all three. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as the small ones die before your auto attacks kill the big one. This next step is important. As you approach Raptors, put a second point into your Q. Your W provides no camp damage or sustain, so don't skill it just yet. Same as Wolves, make sure your Q is lined up with as many of the small Raptors as possible so that you can move on once the big one is dead. Then you get to your red buff, and here's where that yellow trinket comes in handy. As you're finishing your red, ward your Krugs. As long as you have vision on the Krugs, you can E onto the medium one from over the wall to save a few seconds. A few seconds may not seem like a lot, but this is usually the difference between getting to scuttle on time. Once you're done with your first clear and are moving on to subsequent clears, you don't need Yellow Trinket anymore. Instead, you can do the same vision trick with your W, which will give you the sight you need to E over. You can do this from lane to Gromp, red to Krugs, and from lane to Raptors. All in all, Yasuo's jungle clear is fairly fast and healthy. Your rune setup and passive are more than enough to sustain through clears without even any life seal, and your clear is wickedly fast in mid and late game. 8 to 10 CS a minute is pretty standard on this pick, and you'll find yourself getting it pretty easily if you want to power farm. Keep in mind that your W does have a long cooldown, so you have to pick and choose when you use it for farming. The general rule to keep in mind is that you can use it on both Raptors and Krugs if your red is up, but only on Krugs if your red is down. Now we have to talk about the next part of jungling, which is ganking. On paper, ganks sound horrible. Yasuo basically just has to walk directly at them and hope they die. There's actually quite a lot of ways you can successfully pull off a gank though, especially in top and bot lanes. Essentially, you have two ways to gank. The first way is that you flank behind them somehow if they don't have vision and DPS them to death before they get back to turret. The second way involves paying attention to the wave, as if the enemy team is shoving a wave under turret at the same moment that your team's next minion wave is approaching your turret, this means you have a line of two minion waves to work off with to gap close onto the enemy. Regardless of which method you use, my two tips are to gank with red buff active for the slow and focus lanes with some sort of setup for you. 
Remember that looking for kills while ganking isn't the main objective of the pick though, it's to scale up safely and fight on your power spikes. Speaking of power spikes, we can move on to the build and rune setups. For your build, I've got two different ones. There's the one that you should go, and the one that I go. I also have one that you should never go under any circumstances. I'll just kickstart it with the build you should never ever go, and that's anything with Infinity Edge in it. After the 13.10 item changes, Infinity Edge is not good on Yasuo, so please do not use it. Yasuo really needs attack speed for this one, and he already deals reduced crit damage for another, meaning you're wasting crit damage amp stats as well as going an expensive item with zero attack speed and zero sustain. It's just not worth it. With that out of the way, let's move on to the standard build you'll go in most games. Your item rush is Gale Force. It gives you most stats that you would want, especially the movement speed being an item stat instead of a mythic passive. It's a great rush item that will spike you super hard. You also don't need lifesteal in the jungle, as you have enough sustain naturally as is. Next, you'll go one of either Shield Bow or Bloodthirster, depending on what kind of comp you're playing against. Having a lifesteal item for fights and for clearing waves is super important. Your third item is Blade of the Rune King, as it's a super high damaging item with attack speed, lifesteal, everything Yasuo would want. Last two items are completely up to you, but my personal preferences mostly include Guardian Angel, a lot of the Bruiser items, some of the tank items, and even more crit items if you really feel like it. Now for the other build, which is what you go if you're me and want to have fun. I rush Bork with my build, and then immediately buy Yumu's Ghost Blade. Here's the deal, Berserker Grease and Bork give enough attack speed with Alacrity to get your Q to the 1.33 second cooldown, and anything is fair game after that. Going full armor pen and lethality makes for some super sick one-shots, especially with how strong Ghostblade is right now on release. My third item is usually Lord Dom's, as I enjoy having armor pen even if it's semi-built into the ultimate. You see, your ult reduces armor on crits after you cast it. However, this build is more about how much damage your ultimate itself is doing up front. After Lord Dom's, I go Prowler's Claw. It procs off of both your ult and your E, so getting that slow and damage amp is super easy. Again, we're just piling on the lethality one-shot type stuff. For my last item, I go Collector to get even more lethality and finish off my 100% crit chance. Is this build better than the standard build? Hell no. Is it more fun? Hell yes. Next up is runes, and there's really just one rune page for this. Fleet Footwork, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Gras, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight. Fleet Footwork is what allows you to rush Gale Force instead of Vamp Scepter, and it also makes sure you're healthy when you contest first Scuttle Crab. I experimented around with Overheal over Triumph, but Yasuo's sustain is fine enough without it, and he needs something to help him get out once he flies in for the takedown. Alacrity helps you get your Q cooldown to the cap as fast as possible, and this is super important for spiking. Obviously, you can take Legend Tenacity if you really need it, but lean Alacrity. Bloodline has been nerfed so many times that I don't even care about it anymore. Coup de Gras might show up with less damage than Cutdown and Last Stand in most games, but the important thing to remember about Coup de Gras is that the damage comes in when you need it the most. Especially with Triumph, you'll want to know that you can get that last bit of damage to finish off the takedown in a fight. Magical Footwear is the only one I'm a bit iffy on since most lane Yasuos like rushing Berserker Greaves, but I think it's playable, and obviously the economy from that rune is great. As for Cosmic Insight, what are you really doing with your life if you're not taking this rune in at least half of your games? It's OP, you heard it here first. So, you have your clear, your ganks, your items, your runes, and your reason. What's the game plan? Well, it's the same as any mid-late game Yasuo teamfight. Get your items and stat check the hell out of the opponent until they lose. You're still Yasuo, and being in the jungle doesn't mean you're allowed to lose the natural inting blood within you. For specific combos, I highly recommend trying this out with Diana mid. Your ult range is deceptively long, so all Diana needs to do is full send it to hit her R, and then you appear out of nowhere to complete the one-shot combo from her knockup. It's also super reliable in fights, unlike something like Gragas. My other mid-jungle combo recommendation is Orianna, as she can put the ball on you as you E Gale Force directly into their team for the wombo combo with your ult afterwards. Other things to look for are engaged supports, as you work wonders with champs like Nautilus, for example. That's gonna do it from me for this one. If you enjoyed, consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out. I stream on Twitch sometimes and also have a Discord, links to both will be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page and any tips are highly appreciated. Bye!